Members of the Colorado State mm. House had have a vote scheduled for Friday on whether to expel State Representative Steve Lebsock following a recent sexual harassment investigation. To be expelled, a two-thirds majority or 44 votes would be needed. Meanwhile, Senate President Kevin Grantham is calling for the Denver District Attorney's Office to look into any sexual harassment claims at the Capitol that constitute assault. And a special note here, we're taping this right around 12.15 every Friday, and we have yet to see the vote, uh, the, the results. So clearly when you're watching this tonight at 8 o'clock, as you always do every week, kind viewers, uh, we already know the results, but right now we do not. So, Patty, I'll throw it to you. We don't know the official vote. How do you think this will go, and should there be an expulsion vote for Representative Lipsock? Well, first, let's have a caveat. If people were fired for saying one dumb thing, I certainly wouldn't be sitting at this table, <laughs> and I'm not sure about the rest of us. And I'm going to proceed we to say yeah. we're going to proceed to say many more dumb things because we don't know what is happening at the Capitol right now. <laughs> Given that caveat. People have been doing criminally stupid things, but they are not, in many cases, rising to the level of an actual crime. Um, someone has to make a complaint to the Denver District Attorney, speaking of criminally stupid, before, before the Denver District Attorney is going to investigate what's going on at the Capitol. You know, it's the Capitol's job to, and the voters, first of all, it's the voters' job to get rid of the criminally stupid people, if they possibly can. Or otherwise, the backup is the Capitol doing what they're doing today. If you look at the investigations that have been done into not just Lepsuk, this I'm really concerned by this uh, more likely to have happened than not standard, which is making this whole thing look like a witch hunt. There's no question that Lepsuk has done some criminally stupid things. They're not things it sounds like that he could ever be charged for criminally. But criminally stupid, but does that mean that for the first time in a century they should vote to expel this member? Uh, I'm guessing they won't rise. It will not happen today because, first of all, people are going to be concerned about the precedent. They're going to be concerned about the fact that is more likely to have happened than not. If it's not good enough for a court of law, is it good enough for getting rid of a colleague, an elected official who technically the voters should have that choice? You also have people who may not be voting not because of honorable things, but because they're worried about their own problems. And where does the litmus test start and end? David, whether or not Lepsock is expelled today, uh, it's historic that they're at least considering it. Uh, your father was one of the preeminent people who understood how the legislature worked, legislature worked, and uh, all the different things that really should should go should, that should happen. Uh, as as you look at it, both your your father's legacy and what's happening right now, are we is the legislature going down the right path to solve this problem? Well, they're they're go uh, doing the appropriate procedures, which is the uh, a motion to expel, which requires two thirds votes so you you, you need a, a, a strong case um, there are some sort some gray areas in here I mean well first of all the the uh, employers council report which you know the redacted version is is on on the web some of the redactions are kind of funny like they talk about they redact the name of someone who in that same paragraph talks about her role as speaker of the Colorado House of Representatives and I want to know who that is <laughs> Uh, you know, but we can't find out from that report. Nor, in fact, is, I mean, Faith Winter, of course, was the one who came forward with this. Her name never appears in it. Lebsock's name never appears in it, so I'm not sure what's going on. <laughs> but in, in, in any case, um, what the legislature can do by the, the Constitution is uh, both, bought, both the House and the Senate can make rules providing punishment for its members or for other persons for contempt or disorderly behavior in its presence. So there's nothing in, in, in here that constitutes a crime. Adultery and fornication, for which we have many alleged propositions, therefore, uh, are not crimes in Colorado. Uh, and, there's, and there's no assault in there that, is, that a DA would investigate by, by Faith Winter's version of what happened at, at the, the Stoney's bar. After he kept propositioning her, he was kind of drunk and, and moved forward to, to like take her arm and she was uh, and he kind of stumbled and, and so that's not that's bad that's improper behavior but it, it's not I don't think a, a criminal assault but the legislature isn't limited to expelling people for crimes disorderly behavior you can plausibly say that repeatedly propositioning people in the legislative building we've got one example of that uh, if you believe all the allegations there are lots of these other things 
occurred in other contexts, like with his a consultant for his state treasurer campaign. Now, the legislature said, oh, Paul Rosenthal, against Democrat whom there are allegations for stuff when he was running for office, they said, oh, that doesn't count, because he was, it's not in the legislature's presence. So is in, the pre in the presence of the legislature, does that include parties that take place off-site, other events like that? It, it, it's not clear, and I guess that's a matter of each individual legislator's judgment. Eric, there's uh, some political pragmatism going on here, too, because to get the two-thirds votes, there's 37 Democrats. Clearly, Lepsak's not going to vote for his own expulsion. So, And they were still working on a few Democratic votes. And they would need a lot of uh, a good chunk of Republicans, at least need 10 or 11, mm -hmm. depending on how many Democrats they had with them. If there's a Republican sitting there is uh, in, in the House, do they look at it more as a pragmatic vote of saying, hey, uh, you should just have Lebsock there in your Democratic caucus and deal with it because that's going to hurt the other party. Uh, or uh, do you get uh, do you get punished later with ads against you in the general election by saying, "Hey, here's a Republican that didn't stand up for women," assuming this can be generalized at that point? Uh, what, what's what would have been the safer bet for Republicans in this in this vote? Well, again, we don't know. <clears throat> right. This is unfolding between the time we tape and the time this airs, and so, so, it, so it goes. I think all legislators, but particularly Republicans, or particularly legislators who haven't committed on this issue, are in a damned if they do, damned if they don't position. No one is having a good time at the Capitol right now. It's a, it is a miserable, uh, a miserable episode that they're all living through. I want to focus not on the House, but on the Senate, because I think the other chamber is actually perhaps the most important one driving this dynamic. You have complaints against at least two Republicans in the state Senate, Randy Baumgartner, Jack Tate. I think one of the hesitations of Republicans in the House to expel Lebsock is that then it then puts the onus on their own party across the, across the hall in the Senate as to what they're going to do with their own members. So they're wanting to set the bar. I think President Grantham, Senate President Grantham yesterday, with his idea of that prior to an expulsion vote, there should be a criminal investigation by the Denver District Attorney. I think that's the wrong bar. As David pointed out, the legislature has the authority to establish their own standards. And I think wherever you put that line, wherever you put that bar, it doesn't need to be, is this criminal conduct that can land you in the state pen? I think the legislature um, is entitled to set a significantly higher bar than that. I don't know how I would vote, to be honest with you, if I was sitting there. I'm glad I'm not. My hat is off to Casey Becker, the majority leader who's been driving this in the House, obviously to Faith Winter. I was at a luncheon earlier this week, totally coincidental, was seated at a table next to one of the complainants, not Representative Winter, but one of the other complainants. None of these women deserve this kind of treatment, having it happen under the Gold Dome, which is supposed to be, you know, where people rise to the occasion instead of sinking to the occasion, uh, is, is disgusting. The question is, and the po Denver Post in its editorial this morning said this was too extreme a remedy. We're not talking about other remedies, which would be a censure or, and or a recall. Now, a recall in Lepsock's case is probably meaningless because he's done here in two months at the end of the session. But it's not necessarily meaningless going forward or in the case of some of the state senators. Ben, uh, as Eric put, there's a lot of glass houses on Capitol Hill. Do you think that will affect the vote? Again, we don't know the results of it at this point, but do you think that affected it one way or the other? Without question. And, it, and it's been a huge driver in, in the build up to the vote and all the drama and tension around is there going to be a vote? And I think it's been a driver with uh, factions on, on both sides of the aisle wanting to delay and delay and delay because they don't want to be subject to that scrutiny themselves. And as Eric alluded to, there are some standing problems uh, for some of the GOP senators. So um, they're no doubt watching this very closely and with extreme concern about their own colleagues. I, I think that um, ultimately this issue is a loser for everybody who doesn't want to force a vote and who doesn't want to have a clear outcome. I, I think particularly for those legislators that are in suburban swing districts that are high, highly competitive, there's, there's really no good way forward here other than to say we have to have a vote, we have to have clarity. Because uh, then you can at least say, hey, I voted my conscience and I voted to, to you know, have transparency as opposed to calling for more BS. <laughs>